Hello, everyone. I am Zhang Yongxi from China Mobile. Nice, my colleague Zhang Haiwen, and I will share with you together the topic of our presentations, another choice for issue multi-cluster and uh, multi-network deployment model. Uh, our, pres uh, our presentation is divided into three parts. Issues, another choice, and validations. Since Haiwen was unable to attend in person, he will share with the first part of our video. Unfortunately, I'm unable to share with everyone outside this time. And my colleague, Zhang Yuxi, will share the second and the third parts on site. First, let's start with some background information. We are from China Mobile, mainly focusing on China Mobile Cloud. It is a cloud computing platform of China Mobile, similar to AWS. It is currently the fastest growing cloud computing platform in China, ranking in the top five in the public cloud market and top three in the US self-domain market. It still is widely used in China Mobile Cloud. 50 products using Istio for canary releases, traffic management, and the observability. In addition, we have also integrated Istio into our operations platform, we call OPS, and the cloud native platform, we call CMP, to provide service mesh capabilities for internal products and external clients. With the development of China Mobile Cloud, we have encountered the demand for using multi-cluster which has also brought new challenges. Due to the historical reasons, many of our products are deployed in dedicated Kubernetes clusters. The resource utilization is generally low, leading to a certain degree of resource weightage. We have adopted a multi-cluster technology based on Kubernetes to centrally manage the idle resource of these clusters, which has improved the overall resource utilization of the clusters. However, it has also brought a new challenge, which is how to use service mesh to span multiple clusters. We think that it still needs to span multiple clusters with three key requirements. The first is a need for service discovery across multiple clusters. The Istio control plane needs to obtain service and the configuration information from all clusters for multi-cluster service governance. The second is the need for cross-cluster service connectivity. Cross-cluster connectivity is required between the Istio control plane and data plane, as well as between data planes. The third is the need for cross-cluster service mesh authentication. In some scenarios, the Istio control plane needs to perform cross-cluster authentication for the data plane. The community provides Istio deployment models for multi-cluster scenarios meets the three key requirements. But let's first review the community's deployment models, which can be divided into two categories from a network topologies perspective, one of which is the single network models. Another model is the multiple network models. Regardless of the network topologies models, and it can be divided into the multi-primary model and the primary remote model from the control plane top logic perspective. How do the community solution meet these three key requirements? The first point is the ability for multi-cluster service discovery. The Istio control plane retrieves authentication information of all clusters Kubernetes API servers, allowing it to access all API servers to retrieve all service and configuration information. 
The second point is the ability for cross-cluster service connectivity. In non-flat network scenarios, cross-cluster connectivity between the Istio control plane and the data plane, as well as between data planes, is achieved by deploying east-west gateways. The third point is the ability for cross-cluster service mesh authentication. In a primary remote scenario, the Istio control plane and the data plane perform cross-cluster authentication using service account tokens generated by the data plane cluster's Kubernetes API server. The community solution effectively meets three key requirements, but also brings some problems. The first is that there are many deployment steps. The deployment of the most complex scenarios requires 10 steps, and the deployment steps will multiply with the number of clusters. The second is time consuming. On one hand, it is because there are many deployment steps that are not automated. On the other hand, in some scenarios, Istio D or the East West Gateway need to be deployed in the mesh cluster, which also requires deployment time. Generally, deploying a new cluster in the mesh takes minutes. If troubleshooting is needed, it will take more time. The third is that there are bottlenecks in the separate network model solution. The cross-cluster service communication heavily relies on east-west gateways, which need to ensure perform and reliability. This issue makes us consider whether there are other alternative solutions. We have explored this aspect, and now my colleague Zhang Yongxi will continue to share more. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, my colleague Hai Wen. Uh, thank you, my colleague Hai Wen. I will, con I will continue with the presentation from here. And to tackle the challenges mentioned above, we introduce a novel Istio multi-cluster approach that differs from the community solution. This approach is based on Cosmos, an open source, all-in-one distributed cloud native solution. This strategy resolves the three key requirements previously outlined. Firstly, global unique Istio control plane, which accomplishes the global service discovery via the API server of the primary cluster. Secondly, an automated interconnection of container networks across multiple clusters, facilitating direct network connections for pods. Thirdly, the challenge of cross-cluster service mesh authentication has been addressed. Next, let's talk about how we met the first key requirement, multi-cluster service mesh or uh, service discovery. Inspired by the open source project Virtual Kubelet, we have implemented the following features. Firstly, global Kubernetes resources across multiple clusters, including services, issue CRDs, are hosted within the master cluster. This setup allows for the utilization of multiple clusters as if they were a single cluster. Secondly, a sub-cluster can exist in the master cluster as one or more virtual nodes. If a pod in the master cluster is scheduled to one of these virtual nodes, it will be dispatched to the corresponding sub-cluster while remaining in the master cluster as a virtual pod. How global service is implemented in a multi-cluster scenario? Services reside within the master cluster. In the master cluster, pods are virtual and their pod IPs are synchronized through a sync mechanism to reflect their real pod IPs in the subcluster. Therefore, the, multi, the multiple endpoints associated with the service may be spread across different subclusters. Consequently, by interacting with the master cluster's API server, ECD can naturally achieve global service discovery. Next, 
Let's talk about how to establish connectivity between container networks across multiple clusters. To, to facilitate network connectivity between pods across multiple clusters, we employed the traditional tunneling technology about the thin eye layer. Given that in Kubernetes, each node is allocated its own network segment, we only need to establish tunnels between each node and all nodes outside the cluster. This approach is feasible in scenarios where there is network interconnectivity between nodes across multiple clusters. This approach is known as a peer-to-peer -peer model. However, when only a few nodes between clusters are interconnected, the P2P mode for multi-cluster network connectivity becomes feasible. To tackle this problem and to accommodate larger-scale multi-cluster environments, we have introduced the gateway mode. Traffic between clusters is routed through gateway nodes. To implement the previously mentioned multi-cluster network connectivity solutions, we have designed the architecture as shown in the diagram. The controller manager operates in each subcluster, synchronizing the network information of the local cluster to the corresponding cluster CR in the master cluster. The network manager in the master cluster reads the cluster CR of all subclusters to generate the respective node config CR for each node. An agent runs on our nodes across multiple clusters, listening to the respective node config CR from the master cluster to configure the current nodes routing table and terminals. Let's talk about how we made the third key requirement, cross-cluster service mesh authentication. Let's introduce the implementation of the community solution. In a multi-cluster scenario, when gateway or sidecar is initiated in remote cluster, it mounts a volume named issue token. The kubelet on the remote cluster then requests a service count token from the API server of that same remote cluster, which is subsequently mounted into the data plane container. Following this, the data plane sends a CSR request to ECD in the primary cluster, including the token information. ECD then verifies the token's validity with the API server of the remote cluster. After successful validation, ECD issues an MTLS certificate and sends it back to the data plane container, thereby fulfilling the CRCR request. In our scenario, following the community standard approach could lead to issues. Our solution isolates ECD from the multi-cluster environment where it's located. Consequently, ECD can only see and interact with the primary cluster's API server. We have made adjustments according to the community supply. When a data plane container starts up, Cosmos requests a service account token from the master's cluster API server and distributes a obtained token to the respect to a respective subcluster. When the data plane in subcluster initiates a CSR request with a token to ECD in the master cluster, ECD verifies the token's legitimacy with the master cluster API server. After successful validation, it generates an MTLS certificate and returns it to a data plane container, thereby completing the CSR request. We have validated our solution. We use the same demo as a community, especially the sleep and hard work demo for our validation process. In this setup, the hard work service, which has two versions, is deployed across two different data plane clusters. Additionally, the sleep component is deployed in both data plane clusters to send requests to hard work. This demo is used to demonstrate and verify results in two scenarios cross-cluster traffic and cross-cluster traffic management. Uh, here are the validation steps listed. We can see that the deployment of issue in a multi-cluster scenario is greatly simplified. 
uh, in cross-class tra traffic scenario, our validation results confirm that whether a request is sent to hardware service from the sleep container on class one or class two, the re response from two versions of hardware alternate. This is consistent with the validation outcomes of the community's solution. Next comes the validation of cross-class tra traffic management. Our tests show that whether accessing the hardware service from a sleep, sleep pod in class one or class two, the results consistently meet our expectations. Finally, I, I warmly invite you to join our open source project, Cosmos. Moving forward, our ambitions for Cosmos include uh, do, uh, donating the project to the CNCF community to attract more external contributors and exploring the applications of and cluster architecture with the Cosmos. Should you have, should you have any inquiries or require any further information, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. All right, Dean, if we have any questions, just go ahead and raise your hand. Oh, great. Hello. So how do you handle certificate rotation between your master cluster and sub cluster? Uh, so, sorry, what? M my, my English is not so good. How do you handle certificate rotation between the different clusters? Um, yeah, how do you so manage the certificate rotation between uh, yeah. the different Kubernetes clusters? Okay, just, uh, I, I can't uh, uh, express myself uh, so well in English. So th this is my email where we can talk about it on, online. Do you need me? You show me find him? Oh, I can help you find his question. Okay, okay, okay. He said that your master cluster and your the slave the master uh, the certification, mm. the ro the rotation, uh,那个证书的轮转是怎么实现的? Uh. Okay, that's it. Uh,是,呃,那那我可以用中文是吧? Uh,你可以,我可以,呃,试着就是翻译。是这样的,就是呃,哦, okay, uh. Cosmos Cosmos的话，它它会把那个这个token，然后这个token，然后下发到这子集群，然后这这样的话呢，子子子集群里里边的那个pod通过访问这个主集群的那个那个ECUD的话，这样的话，然后就就能是实现一个证证书的一个一
yeah, to sync the, the configuration amongst all the clusters. Yeah, uh, we we use tunnels uh, between master clusters and uh, subclusters, uh, and the su subclusters to subclusters, so so that the uh, a pod in master cluster can communicate w with a pod in the subcluster, and the pods in subclusters can communicate uh, can communicate as well. Is that right? Yeah, but how uh, can uh, I, I want to understand if there's any problems about brain splitting or how do you eventually get this synchronization between clusters? If there's something that is uh, handling by, by your system or if it's uh, Istio that does it? Do you? Oh, okay, okay. Do you understand the question? Uh. Do you want her to translate? Oh, okay, uh, so so that let's talk about it on, on online. Okay, okay, that that's my email. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.